Good morning. Today we're going to work a related rates problem. And it has to do with this picture I've drawn here. Um, I'll read the problem and then I'll have it scroll uh, while I'm doing a lot of this explanation across the video. So the problem states, the top of a silo has the shape of a hemisphere of diameter 2 meters. If it is coated uniformly with a layer of ice and if the thickness is decreasing at a rate of 4 centimeters per hour, how fast is the volume of the ice changing when the ice is 10 centimeters thick? So I've drawn myself a little silo, kind of looks like a silo to me anyway, and it's got this hemisphere shaped top. And it's got this little layer of ice that I've exaggerated with this little blue line. Um, the layer, the thickness of the ice is changing, so I've labeled that thickness as X. Um, the radius or the, well, it was given to us in the idea of a diameter of the hemisphere. Well, we're going to be concerned with the volume, so we're going to be concerned with the radius of the hemisphere. If the diameter of the hemisphere was uh, two meters, the, the radius of the hemisphere is one meter. That's constant, so I just I didn't label it with a variable. We do need a, an equation, and our equation, uh, I'm just going to call it EQ, uh, our equation is going to be based on the volume of a hemisphere. Uh, and the volume of a hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed, the radius of the, of the uh, sphere. So the volume of the, of the hemisphere is two-thirds, it's half that, two-thirds pi radius cubed of the hemisphere. So now we want the we kind of want to make this a little more specific to this problem. We want the volume of this uh, of this layer of ice, and the volume of the ice will equal uh, the volume of the outer hemisphere minus the volume of the inner hem inner hem inner hemisphere. <laughs> Sorry, and um, so. We'll just take the, the volume out of the outer hemisphere is going to be uh, two-thirds pi. And then the radius of the outer hemisphere is x plus the radius of the, of the, of the inner hemisphere. Uh, since the uh, rate of change was given to us in centimeters and the radius in meters, I'm just going to change that one meter radius into 100 centimeter radius so that I don't have to convert at the end and be confused. So the volume of the outer hemisphere is going to be 2 thirds pi times 100 plus the thickness x cubed and then minus the volume of the inner hemisphere which is actually constant so it'll, when we derive it will make it zero but just to be thorough we're going to do this uh, in case we wanted to use it for something else. So the volume of the inner hemisphere is just 2 thirds pi times 100 cubed and I'm not even going to expand that. So that's our equation that we're going to derive and um, I'll probably drop the little volume sub ice when, when we do so. Um, so now we'll talk about what we're given and we were given the rate at which the ice is decreasing so that's dx with respect to time dx dt equals and it's decreasing so it's negative 4 centimeters per hour and we want to find um, the VDT, the rate at which the volume, and I'm just going to rename it as large V, the VDT when X equals 10 centimeters. So now we're pretty much ready to go. We're going to take this formula. And we're going to derive both sides with respect to T. So we'll take the derivative with respect to T of V equals the derivative with respect to t of this long thing, 2 thirds pi times the quantity 100 plus x cubed minus 2 thirds pi times 100 cubed. So the uh, derivative of the volume with respect to t is just d v dt and the derivative of this part with respect to t, bring the, we'll take the uh, power of 3 down in front. It'll cancel with this uh, 3 in the denominator here. So we'll just get 2 pi times 100 plus x. Decrease the power by 1 is 2 times the derivative of x of the inside with respect to t. The derivative of 100 is 0. The derivative of x with respect to t is dx dt. And now... Um, 
the derivative of 2 thirds pi or negative 2 thirds pi 100 cubed times 100 cubed is just zero. It's a constant. So now um, we might actually be ready to go. We've, we want dv dt. We want uh, we have dx dt, we have x, it's going to equal 10 centimeters. I think we're, we're ready to go. So dv dt equals 2 pi times uh, 100 plus 10 squared times negative 4 uh, oops, centimeters per hour. Uh, and this is uh, meters, of course, meters squared. So um, we'll just, ooh, we kind of ran out of room. Anyway, we'll just do this. Uh, dv dt equals 2 pi, and that'll be meters, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this isn't meters, this is centimeters. We took all that time to do that. Uh, centimeters, so we'll get um, 2 times uh, 110 centimeters squared, and that is, oops, 1, 1, O squared is uh, one twenty one zero zero squared centimeters centimeters squared times negative four centimeters per hour. So let's see what all that is. Uh, times two times negative four. I'm just gonna. Oops. Uh, 2, 4, 2, 0, 0 times negative 4 is equal to negative 96,800 uh, pi centimeters cubed per hour. So the volume is decreasing at a rate of... <laughs> Uh, negative 96,800 pi cubic centimeters per hour. And that's it.